really, really come out for him. So, I mean, I'm intrigued to see how they actually want to try and uh, set up the lanes. It'll be a, be a big factor heading into this because it's going to be pretty difficult. If you give TNC some breathing room, you know, Sven's able to find some farm in the jungle, they pop off on this hero. Let's see. All right. We're in series number two of four. We are jam-packed with Dota tonight. I'm, I'm high. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a long night of some uh, some Southeast Asia Dota. It's going to be uh, a good one, though, as we already saw a, a good first series, and I'm, in, I'm, I'm anticipating this second one is just going to be as good as well. As, you know, we're going to see already TNC can smoke up and see what they can do. They might actually run into Moon. No, he's just going to drop a warden dip out. So um, with this potential here, I mean, how are they... What is really the the timing here for Fnatic? Is this just the the win condition from the Morphling really try and give the uh, the space here to Raven or? I mean, I, I think Moon has to absolutely pop off, right? He just needs to dominate. He needs to rotate uh, around the timings of the Moonlight Shadow. I think that's going to come into the equation quite heavily for Jabs. Mm -hmm. um, and if they're able to get kills onto the invoker that's going to slow down the sven's timings it's going to allow them to you know make more aggressive rotations into the jungle block the stacks maybe take them on their own if uh if masteros is able to invade the dire tricamp area and take away a two three times ancient stack that's going to go a huge way win yeah, I, I like the way you put it as well, if they're able to kind of make the Invoker's lane a, a game a little bit more difficult. Because you take a look though, like, the, the plays that TNT can really have at the moment is pretty reliant on the Invoker having a good time, as Masteros is taking a little bit of damage up top as well. Just trying to force out as much as he can. He's only got one set of Tangos, but yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, Pango being in position four, you can make plays around the Rolling Thunder, but it is 70 seconds and they don't really have another way to really initiate. Probably see Viper if he wants to go for this eight toss. So is this going to be a little bit difficult for TNC to actually take fights if Armel has a rough game? Um, I, I mean, of course, like that, that's always going to be the case, but oh man, they've actually gone and killed KP. It's what we were saying they needed to do, right? <laughs> yeah, nicely done from them. Just the, uh, the nice five blast set up into the arrow. Looks like able to find that one. And uh, Jabs did get first blood. So they're actually, he's going to TP up top. So they just want a first blood. Try and secure the first wave here from Raven. Denies a lot of it away from uh, from KP as well. Yeah, nicely done. Tim's is doing a good job as well. Pulling the uh, wave through the small camp. So no pull is going to happen there. Especially with that start that uh, KP had. Giving up the first blood. He's not even going to walk back for the experience. This is all going to go the way of Tim's. KP is going to eat a little bit of damage up in the meantime. I see just DJ. He's even got the Orb of Venom as well. I guess trying to uh, see what he can do. I've seen a lot of, uh, I guess, the, the fact that the Ogre seen a, a lot of emphasis on not really picking up too many points, uh, at least going for this Orb of Venom. Uh, is it just to try to man fight the, the Pango? It depends on what lane setup you've got, right? Like, you if you're actually able to get into attack range and start right-clicking people, then sure. But there are some times where, you know, with insane attack range, where it's straight up not viable. So you just need to opt around playing a little bit more offensively, maybe going for the boots, going for things of that nature. We see they've had a very good start, at least for the Morphling. I mean, he's about to be in the next couple of waves. He's already level two and a half, which is a big factor. If Morphling can get a three without really getting contested too heavily, then he's going to feel like he's gotten out of a, a very tough spot for him in the landing stages. We, we take a look at mid Moon looking to have a, a pretty good time. Both the the damage at the moment, Armel, uh, pretty even, which is actually dead even at the moment from, from Moon. So we'll see if he wants to go for some stats to kind of keep up with the Invoker, who uh, has a, it looks like parts of the Null coming out. Yeah, uh, Febby, he's doing a good job with his pulls, making sure he's denying as much as he can away from jabs, but he's already at a little bit of a experience disadvantage, getting gone on a little bit here, actually. Mm -hmm. Jabs might go for the kill. Underneath the tier 2 tower, Febby's going to end up falling. Nicely done from Jabs, the point blank arrow, and just uh, a little solo kill he gets, and now he's going to be able to take over some of the small Gabby's camp experience. Pretty low. Yeah. Cut his way through, but I'm sure he's yelling out, please bring me back a salve. Back to the lane. 
Should be able to give him a nice little heavenly ghost, but they give it himself instantly. Nicely done, and they glyphed it up as well. So Jabs, he takes no damage for it. And now Gabby, uh, honestly, like he is not going to get a lot out of this. What's he got? Cory coming, another self, but it's going to be a lot of resources wasted. Didn't have any vision up there? That was just some predictions. Nicely done by Jabs. Jabs, God, he's just uh, a hell of a player here. So he wants he's just the, the pressure. I mean, Febby's got that level two, so with the Bassy, we're just going to see him constantly kind of spamming up the region to keep Gabby at least somewhat afloat. But Jabs is already level three, which is a which is a big thing. And, and Mashros is doing relatively decent with his levels as well. Opting for the two points in the Sacred Arrow, a nice little damage boost going from level But you would think he's going to start leveling up the Star Storm. Oh, wait, never mind. Tim's coming through to the bottom rune. They're going to scout out that it's top. Will Moon be able to grab it? No, just denies it away. <laughs> this shackle didn't really have anywhere to uh, to land on, but Gabby is getting ran down up top here. It's going to be able to juke through the trees and, and get back to Febby, but ooh, Jub's going to take a lot of damage. They'll end up trying to turn their attention towards the Omni Knight. They got the hoof stomp set up. Jabs on a killing spree already. So you you brought up that the you know I guess kind of maybe taking away the Marana from Tim's, but you also highlighted the fact that you know, he's a incredibly strong Marana player himself. Jabs at the moment. I mean three and zero, some very solid plays so far throughout his laning stage. Nothing too bad that you can say about Jabs as a player. You know in the past. You had Fnatic wanting to cater to DJ, uh, perhaps a little bit too much at times. And, you know, I thought they had a really good showing at ESL1 Thailand, for example. But ever since then, they tried changing things up. Didn't work so much. And I'm happy that this is the iteration of the team that they're going with. It's a, it's a very good start to this game one. I mean, they got a 1,000 net worth lead very early on, but it just shows how strong at least this start to the leaning stage has been. And Jabs is even going to get a nice little D ward as well. So now this is going to enable a lot of his rotations, being able to go from top to mid and just kind of running on that backside. A lot of the time, the Marana wants to kind of find the angle on behind the T1 just for this arrow. It's going to give the uh, the mid lane invoker a little bit uh, less of a time to be able to react with how his camera is going to be positioning. So um, you see he's even got... Uh, kind of a deeper ward as well perfect ward as well because you know with this that they're going to try and give him some sort of stacks and you know that's catching essentially two you know the one that it actually has vision on as well as the fact that you're probably going to be pulling this uh stack closest to the t1 tower to the right oh no he finds DJ coming mid. Meanwhile, Masteros just solo kills Gabby up top but we'll keep our eye on him mid as Ergo does end up falling Masteros is going to be able to run himself away though. He's got 15 HP regen, so a solar kill on this Ven. Meanwhile, we see that Ogre end up dying mid. They were trying to set up for the Fire Blast into the arrow combo, but uh, wasn't able to find that. A quick tornado kept the Invoke Masteros? alive, but... Oh, so close to dying there. <laughs> He might still die though as yeah, Tim's comes over with the swashbuckle, so hanging around for a little bit too long. We'll pay the price, but... Snipe Febby as well. I'm sorry, uh, Jab's trying to snipe Febby there. To his credit, KP has made a, a decent recovery after the after giving up that first blood. But you know, one v three, it was always going to happen. Uh, Raven still looking pretty scary on that morphling as well. He's already got his morbid mask, so he's not going to need to ferry any more regen out for himself. He's going to be able to sit there, farm safely, and essentially DJ can start to make these rotations up away from the rest of the team. They actually want to get aggressive though, down bolt with the stampede. Allows the ogre to set up for the stun. Well, that's all they needed to close the distance. It's a nice kill hunting KP. Meanwhile, mid though, Moon. Well, a little bit low. Doesn't have a whole lot of mana as well to be able to turn and help out jabs. But it looks like it was just trying to get himself away from the aggression. So nice use of the stampede there. Nets himself a kill. But they do now know that Masteros doesn't have this. Although Poof Storm onto two. Tim's going to end up falling. Masteros is playing out of his mind in this laning stage. And now with the arrow clips on top of this vent as well. Poof Storm still on cooldown. Jab's going to come over. It's only one point up in the Star Storm. But Gabby, he doesn't have a stun for another five seconds here. And along with the purification, that's on cooldown as well. A perfect leap. Oh, jabs. jabs, he blocks the retreat. This man is just styling on them at the moment. Armel's going to TP forward. Finally, they get the king. Or do they? Fairy file? He's got the real... Oh, it's not enough. The one, two sticks, unfortunately. But, man, Jabs is... Whew. That was so worth it, though. You know, 
kill on the core, forces the rotation away from mid, gives Moon more time to farm, gets him the rune. It's a double damage as well. So just wins on wins on wins coming up for Fnatic. It's uh, looking good for them so far as they've uh, even got Raven, who's just having an incredibly nice time down bot. But I mean, 14C, you see Armo, he is top of the net worth at the moment. He's actually going to be going into that Orchid that we saw last game as well from the position to Invoker. So trying to have the uh, a little bit of the, the catch and kill potential. You did bring up the last game that it feels very awkward to build up, you know, at least with what you're able to do with it on the Evoker. It's not kind of these cost effective items that we can see kind of the urn really uh, utilize with the cost works. Yeah, I mean, wait, are they even building an urn at all on the Viper's team? Got okay, one. They've already got it on KP, yeah. I mean, it makes sense uh, to go into this Orchid, but you gotta be getting kills to get the Orchid. It's kind of like uh, a bit ironic here. Oh, they're going in onto Masteros though. He might have overstayed his welcome for once. Back into the Zven. Just the that tower. last right click with the tower. Yeah, you just gets up costing him his life there. So, I mean, that's a nice little bit of uh, revenge they get because Gabby, I mean, he's at least the thing on this event is that you've got this innate farming mechanic with the, uh, with the, I mean, four points maxed out already. So you are going to be able to catch up, but it's still got to keep in mind though, like shutting down his lane and it's going to be very obvious where this Ven wants to play. I mean, he's just going to try and position himself around the triangle. So this can give Fnatic, you know, opportunities to, to move in with the Mirana ulti and, and just, you know, place some vision as well. And that makes Masteros' role in this game so important needs to constantly be pushing this wave in to make sure that it is obvious when the Sven is off farming things in the jungle. And oh, we found an Omni Knight. That's uh, one little bit of information. And now Gabby, he's going to stack up that Ancients a third time and Dump start to farm it up. DJ will end up falling. Raven's going to get a return kill by the bounty timing. So looks like Zen comes over and snags. It's going to be one for two overall uh, across the map here as the, uh, it will be a lot of pressure force on top of the KP. He's got a haste, and Masteros with the TP, unfortunately, not available here. So KP is just able to solely bring him down. Armel's even going to come over as well, just in case there's any more reinforcements from Fnatic, which are coming over in the form of the Morphling and also the Ogre as well. Let's see if they want to try and make something happen, and they will. They'll smoke up. Mirana showing. This is going to be... I mean, finding the connection on top of KP, that's the issue, though. Great timings on the aggression from KP, by the way. All throughout that, Gabby was just taking that gigantic ancient stack. Now he's able to rotate through to mid. He's going to keep pushing with this siege creep. So right now it's just delaying as much as possible on TNC to make sure that they're not focusing on the spin. And our TNC, they're looking to turn though. Armel baited out this now with the rotation coming through from the outpost. KP is going to get involved as well. The pop, the moonlight to try and give them some space to retreat away. But the consequence is going to be DJ's life. As meanwhile, we just see Gabby having a very nice time in the jungle. He's able to catch up, but they want to go back forward, Moon. Nice to Finds the Omni, the perfect arrow combo as well. Tim's going to try and disrupt this with the Rolling Thunder. Perfect chain lock down on the Mirana. And it doesn't have any mana to be able to leap away. So it's a couple of heroes down from Radiant, but you do see you know what's occurring across the map though like gabby's getting a lot out of this you know morphling as well trying to, to keep up he was in fifth like a minute ago so he is just Good rocking it up the net worth charge you know you might see a bunch of kills go the way of fanatic but they don't care at the end of the day as long as the sven's having a good time that's all they're worried about just the uh the classic sven game where is you know had a, maybe a, a rougher laning stage, but you just stack him up and then, yeah, I mean, even then, like he's leaned so strong a lot of the time, but just the comeback potential that he has. It's uh, annoying to watch sometimes as this hero is always around the top of the net worth, but the Sentinel, I mean, he's in a bit of pain at the moment here as DJ tries to help out with the stun, but it's not going to be enough there as Armel is able to bring him down. It's going to give them uh, an opportunity maybe to get some vision down as Feb is going to ward, looking to drop it a little bit more aggressive. Tried to get that shackle in onto Armel. Didn't quite connect. Would have been enough to take him down with that javelin. But to do this all, are they going to find jabs here? They've got the rolling thunder jabs. Got two more leap charges to be able to utilize as well. He's juking throughout the tree line and uh, he's all right. It looks like still would have been a, a bit of a difficult kill to go for him. Um, so jabs is actually still going to go for the yule scepter, even though you're against his vend with the, uh, for the 15 talent. 
um, the spell looks like Jabs mainly just wants to use it more aggressively and I guess also what it's able to provide the Mirana with some regen. I suppose so. I mean, with the Sven, he's most likely going to ult. He's probably dead here on Jabs. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Uh, they're probably going to want to try and get aggressive, start making their first movements when he's got that axe picked up. So maybe rather than using it defensively, just needing to make sure they're in prime position on some high grounds and uh, then use the Yule Scepter offensively. Pick up the Sven, uh, pick off the Sven before he's able to get a BKB purchase for himself. Top lane KP. They missed the shackle. They still continue to dive though. Moon's doing an immense amount of damage. Yeah. They could all focus fire javelin and yeah, the right clicks unfortunately the viper not really able to deal with that. Even Ravens trying to show up as well. So I mean they haven't found a tower just yet for Fnatic. It looks like they will finally be able to though with the uh, top T1 ending up falling here. Yeah, good job. Gives Raven a little bit of <laughs> snipes a, a few of those uh, creeps there, but Raven still gets the majority of them just going to progress into the jungle. It opens up a lot more farming space for him as well, so be very happy. He's been able to achieve. Big that we've got waiting. I suppose they're getting close-ish to this MKB. I think maybe Moon will be trying to pick that one up, only about 750 gold away, and then starting to make some action. Yeah, it's going to be the, the hunt potential that Moon can have and also just the Mirana constantly enabling you to be able to find these pickoffs as OTNC. They're smoking up, trying to catch up Maseros here. And this is very deep, and if he can get the Stampede off, he's also got some magic protection with the hood, but it looks like still Maseros is in trouble as there's actually no help coming through from Fnatic. They'll end up burning out the, uh, the Centaur. Now they want to try and look to, to take the T1 Tower mid as well. Real estate this is right now, and they might even try and make an aggressive play into the bounty rune. KP's positioning himself for it, but I don't know if they're in this position to do it right now with the rolling thunder having just been used. But Amel, he'll at least pick up this bounty rune, find himself a jabs kill. No, could just yet. Although Amel can still hunt, he moves pretty fast, but we'll miss the tornado, unfortunately. Oh. Jabs even lands the arrow, but meanwhile, mid Febby's pushed up pretty far forward. Raven waveform aggressively. KP is going to show, but I mean, with the protection of this Omni Knight morph, it's uh, yeah, very difficult for you to actually try and pressure out Raven here. Now we've got the Orchid here, though, onto the Invoker. Might be starting to make some more aggressive plays. Morphling is, of course, public enemy number one for TNC. So I think they're going to be happy with whoever they find pickoffs for. Probably just only the, the Ogre they don't really care all that much about right now. Gabby's going for uh, Silver's Edge, it looks like. Interesting. Do you like this uh, this item choice here from the Zen? Uh, it's okay. Is he really going? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. I'll be real, I, I don't like it all that much. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. What's... Okay. Maybe he's going for solo pickoffs, like trying to find the Wind Ranger when she's farming on a that I can think of. Yeah. You use it to actually start the fight, then when you panic, uh, Wind Run away, he's going to be level 15 by that point, so he can just stun, kill her. Simple as that. Yeah, well, for Dyer, they're going to smoke up, trying to utilize that ward that Febby placed deep previously, but unfortunately, Radiant. They're uh, kind of a potentially aware as DJ Moon sitting behind the tier 2 tower. You got Maseros still continuing to play up top, who had a very good start to the game. 2, 5, and 3 at the moment. He does have this blink coming out for the Centaur, so it looks like they want to try and maybe smoke up and, and make a play happen as Moon also with the MKB. They've taken the entire jungle away from Fnatic, but Gabby, he might get caught out here. The smoke pops. Blink forward, and now he's just going to get melted down. Gabby will pay the price, and now they're hunting for more. Maseros with that stand. Stampede, although it looks like with the pings, they want some objectives instead. It's going to be more guaranteed and easier time for them as they're just going to be able to walk it down, take the T1. KP is showing they can wrap behind as Masteros is already set up at the moment with the counter forward. He'll find the Viper, the perfect chain locked down. They're going to try and get on Febby, but the story stops him from getting in range for the Heavenly Grace. Now Viper's going to end up falling, and now Omni's going to pay the price as well as Febby trying to disengage. Tim's going to be able to disrupt the fight with the Rolling Thunder. It is a two for one at the moment. Can they continue forward for more though? Armel thinking about running up the high gun straight into the hoof stomp. Febby chucks out the ultimate, but it's not going to matter. As Fnatic, they punish them from trying to defend 
defend this T1 tower without the help of this Ven. Masteros played that incredibly well. The wraparound, finding the initiation of the Viper, and then Stampede slowing up the Omni Knight so you couldn't dispel off the Hoofstomp arrow combo. Very strong, our Fnatic. It's clear that what they were looking for when they went to pick up Masteros is they wanted someone aggressive, someone that can find those cheeky pickoffs and playing his role to perfection. It, it all just goes to show when you're playing at this high level, a simple mistake like uh, Gabby being caught out there where you know, he, he was a little too deep, to be honest. He has teammates nearby, but just being a, a little greedy and being punished effectively for losing mid tier one, few heroes, and now this game feels like it's in Fnatic's favor quite comfortably. And they are kind of posturing around the high ground board that they have at the moment, Radiant. They're coming over. Let's see how they can initiate Masteros. Two man hoof storm. Look at the shackle as well on top of Gabu, who's just getting shredded by the Wind Ranger, though. But the stun provides some distance, moves in trouble. Now Tim's got to roll forward as well. Arrow connects, but Gabby has got the rest of the team here to try and provide some distance. Now Armel with the tornado. Morphling controlled up. He's got the man to be able to get rid of the orc, but now he's just completely burned out of mana. And Raven, he's in trouble. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It's three down from Fnatic. They even get the vision on jabs as well. So it looks like this Mirana. Can you retreat away? Armel's hunting. He's actually going to try and go down to the southern side near the river. Oh, the he's, he's got that silver edge DJ is dead. Oh, nicely done. That's a big fight for Dyer. Yeah. I mean, you. That is. Oh, God's strength's just finishing, but they could probably still take Roach if they want it. Uh, I think wanting to just play around the safety a little bit, but. It happened like we were predicting before, right? Jabs, he used the Yule Scepter offensively onto the Sven, used up a fair few seconds, about six or so of that God Strength, just with that Yule's arrow combination. But oh, still, not enough to be able to turn things around for his team. Yeah, nice positioning. TNC just uh, answering the request from Fnatic, trying to attempt to fight there. Well, they're real quick, Gradient. I mean, they scout out Armel, who's pushing top with that deep lane ward. So Armel could be in trouble. Although Raven shows, meanwhile, Tim just gets absolutely melted by Moon down bot. They're still hunting Armel top, is underneath the Sentry Ward. So Jabs has got set up, and now DJ can follow up with the Fire Blast as well. Does get a multicast, which makes things even sweeter. Although Armel, two man tornado. Morphling should be able to follow up in a couple of seconds with the waveform, even showing up as well, just in case. And now, can they walk into Roche? Try it. Two down. Very well could. Moon's got enough for his Blink Dagger and obviously finished up his MKB already. Going for that solo pickoff potential. Looking to find the, the Sven if he can, but Invoker's the one that's going to be priority target number one. Well, Dyer, they do scout this one out. Let's see if they're going to be able to get here to try and contest it. Sven, got strength available. Yeah, coming over, but Roche is falling pretty low now that Moon showed up with the Focus Fire. Looks like this haven't gone in just yet. They'll give the Heavenly Grace out to KP. He's going to try and posture pretty aggressively, but Aegis, they've already been claimed here from Fnatic. Moon's going to be the one to pick that up, and he's actually going to go for a BKB instead. Yeah, I can feel it. It means that, you know, with that second life that he's got, he's able to play hyper-aggressively rather than just go for the singular pickoff. Die, they're actually smoking up. They don't give a damn that Radiant just claimed that Aegis here. They want to pick off, even though Gabby still hasn't hit that extra item that he's looking for at the moment. So they're hunting down Jabs, but this is incredibly deep here. Jabs stunned up. They should have the control and the damage to bring him down throughout the first duration. And they do so with the Armel Sunstrike. Now they're going to try and see what they can get. Controlling up the jungle. Bot's already pushed in if they want to try and link that kill up with an objective. But they do kind of have to worry about top as well, which Masteros is shoving the lane in. Gabby can keep himself down bot here. I mean, they need to respond to this. Otherwise, yeah, be losing a fair amount. So defensively onto the tower. Now look what happens afterwards. That's the big response. And this is exactly what Fnatic need to be doing. They need to be pushing aggressively. Get the Bloodlust onto the Siege Creep as well. So this top tower is going to go down pretty quickly as well. So they're going to trade towers, although it does look dire. They're thinking about offering up a defense as Tim's and Cole are teeping forward. They didn't get that tower fast enough, and now they want to continue defending with the blink straight on top of the Morphling, but Raven's able to get the Archerich shift off, and now they still have the Stampede if they want to reset the fight. But on top of the backline, Gabby, he finds the Yoga, Master over the counter initiation. Can they protect DJ? It looks like with the Tornado, however, it's going to clip his life, and now Master is his trouble as well. Stampede's going to wear off, so they can continue chasing forward for more. And as Gabby will cleave him down, and now TNC. I mean, even though they're down the ages, they are just looking 
to take these fights straight head to head against Fnatic. It's just this Sven, the terror of the Sven always being a factor. You know, he's got that lifesteal. So even when you think you've got him, all it takes is one or two uh, lucky hits, cleaving off a few people, and suddenly he's still in fighting shape. He's getting damn close to that Ag Scepter as well, farming up this Ancients. And uh, probably with this next wave that he's going to push through, Febby doing the good support thing, bringing it right to him, getting that extra couple of seconds that he needs. And there we go. We've got Superman ready. He's about to hit that level 20 timing as well, so paired up with the Agnums, he's going to have just a 7 second downtime, or 7 second, sorry, cooldown on the Stormhammer, so it's going to make it very, very difficult to be able to control him through these fights, as we do see the Radiant, they're going to smoke up, they've got the Aegis for another 2 minutes here, so really looking to try and utilize it, there's a couple of items getting picked up as well, Moon with that BKB. Scans on the mark though, so they're well aware of the positioning. Let's see if they can... I'm really liking this item build from Raven. He's opting to go for E-Blade first, realizing that, right, before Sven's got his BKB, I need to make sure I'm popping this guy ASAP. He's gonna have enough when he finishes this Ancient stack, and it's gonna fly out to him right now. So I think that's the timing that they're playing around. As soon as that reaches him, and where they've still got the Aegis, they need to be making a play. And they even get a little bit of extra sustain coming through as well with the uh, with the jabs mechanism. But Radiant looks like they're just going to try and push him bot die. They're just going to do the the opposite as heading to the top side where they've got a very good couple of wards positioned at the moment. So really wanting to try and posture around their vision. And so, a double uh, wave as well. So they're uh, not going to be able to defend this. I think all TNC need to do right now is just say, look, they need to come and fight us. Uh, if Sorry, Fnatic say we need, they need to come and fight us if they want to get maximum use out of this Aegis. So. Hmm, they're going to do just that. Glyph popped here, so TNC recognizing this. They're going to disengage. No one's hitting that bottom tier two. Right by the bounties as well. Well, the Raven still hanging around bot. They haven't seen this at the moment. They don't have any vision at the bottom side, but they do also see with that lane ward, they are well aware that they're posturing aggressively. KP's gonna face check this, takes a full brunt of the force with the focus fire, and it looks like KP's in trouble though, Febby. Pops the ultimate, and KP's still ticking him down though. It looks like Gabby wants to go back in. God's strength's gonna get utilized here, but in nice shackles time for Moon. They can counter initiate forward as well. The central, can they chain lock him down though, Sven? He's always gonna be able to bounce back and forth with that Superman, and then we go straight on top of the Mirana. They know Raven's here though. They know Raven, he's TP'd, but they've got the vision. They still can fall, oh my. God, the damage from Gabby deals with the first life, and now Tim's can follow up with the Rolling Thunder as well. He's got a couple of positions to able to bounce back and forth. Just Gabby's damage is so much paired up with the Alacrity, and now they find the Morphling as well. Bounce back once again. Mastos going to try to shop the back line, but the real battle is going to be the position once the quick Orca Raven gets out with thanks to the Mance up, and now they're hunting though. Our uh, Mel Tornado's up, and Raven just nowhere to run to is this Ven. You can't kayak him, and once again, Mastos still trying to do whatever he can on the back line, but to try for Gabby and Fnatic, they're going to end up losing four. And I mean, TNC, they've just been running them left, right, and center across the map. The plays they've made, even though they've been down the ages, has just been so incredible. Yeah. Perfect vision coming through from the supports. Perfect uh, timings coming through. You know, as soon as they can, anything that they can do just to get that extra 10 seconds out here, there, and everywhere. They're just funneling everything that they can into Gabby. Uh, and making perfect use out of that god strength. It just felt like there was nothing they could do to stop him there. And that's also a fight before Gabby picked up that BKB. So you were highlighting, but the E-Blade potential to be able to just burst him down. I mean, now they're gonna end up taking that tier two tower up top as well. And now he's getting even closer and closer. Although Moon, once again, Finding a solar kill, so Viper's gonna pay the price, though he does have to be careful because Gabby's hunting and wants a little bit of revenge and an extra solar kill himself. Had about a couple of seconds left on that silver edge but the bonus of having that as opposed to the shadow blade is that the downtime on it is about five seconds less so he's gonna probably try and go for another move onto him no, he's just gonna back off a little bit Be a good time for gabby to go back to the ancients now actually it's 27 minutes so those tier uh three items are so much more effective in terms of a power spike compared from tier one to tier two it's pretty nice I'm gonna take that. It gives you a lot of burst potential. We're seeing kind of this vents start to, to hold the quiver now. 
Yeah, I mean, five second cooldown and your Stormhammer is a seven second cooldown now with the uh, the talent, so you're going to get it every time. Mm. And we just see just continuing to, to be a nuisance at the moment here. Tim's just keeping the lane shoved in. They've tried to hunt him, but uh, unfortunately just the uh, that Moonlight Shadow wasn't enough there. And we see, I mean, TNC have been able to accumulate uh, a 6,000 net worth lead even though they were down that, that Aegis here. And... Honestly, things are looking incredibly good for the boys on Dial. Is this... Do you... Do you want them just to kind of wait that next timing, which they actually now seems like they have with the BKB? I'm just a, a little bit worried that the wind range has just been picking them off a bit too much, and I think this needs to come down to TNC just starting to, to group up once they hit that you know, next item. It looks like they are going to, though. Yeah, exactly. Like, you, you mentioned you're worried about them getting picked off. What's the way around that? Group together. You know, there's there's no way that Winrun is going to be able to deal with all of you throughout all of that. You've got ways to deal with it. You know, NATO, you've got the Deafening Blast, you've got the Lucky Shot, you've got the Omni Knight. It needs to be a perfect storm for Windrunner to be able to 100-0 to zero on a TNC roster. And you see Radiant, they're playing so passive at the moment. I mean, they didn't see anyone until just then showing top. And they're trying to play around what little vision they have at the moment around their tribal camp. Uh, Roche is going to be up in two minutes here, so we're going to have a, a little bit more back and forth. Although the next objective is going to be the, the bounties and the outposts up in about um, 40 seconds here. So we'll see if there is any contestion coming through. It's on the pango as well. So offensively being used against the win range, you would think priority for them. They drop a Sun Strike into the Roche Pit. Not up yet, still a minute 40. Uh, you can see Moon, he's, he's gone on a bit of a mission. He's purchased up that Blink Dagger as well, trying to find out anyone farming on their own, but not be lucky. No one on his side of the map, even. See, KP just picked up the Blade Mail as well, so it's going to make it very difficult for the Wind Ranger just to focus down the, the Viper, but they're going to pop the Moonlight in this high ground. Who can they find though on top of the back? Mass Source is going to be in trouble here, away from the rest of the team. They had that vision to be able to not have a carry in the world about the Moonlight. And are they hunting for more? Where's the detection coming through? Looks like it's going to be... I mean, they do see DJ, who's going to try and attempt the TP out. Can he get him? They can't. <laughs> I mean, it now gives you... Yeah, and now with the gem on Tim's, like, you're just going to be able to kind of deward around the triangle camp, and that next big objective, Roshan, having the vision advantage here is going to make it very difficult for Fnatic. Still trying to go for these solo pickoffs, but there's just there's no one. No one's squishy enough, and I think Arbel's been doing a good job of making sure he's sticking with at least one other hero throughout all of this. There we go, just posturing on the high ground, exactly what they need to do, control the triangle. Looks like Radiant, they're going to lose, I mean, a, a second Observer Ward now, so they've only got one kind of around the, the bottom power room section. Um, and they don't want to be there on Fnatic, you know, they know that the top side is where all the objectives are. You know, mid tower, Roshan spawning in about 15 seconds, and then even the, the top lane, if they win a team fight, they can just go for racks. Yeah, it's a, it's a big power spot that, that TNC are in at the moment. You see they're kind of debating this high ground. You've just got KP pushed up so far forward. A hero that's very difficult to burst down. But I like this play from Fnatic. They're going to wrap all the way around. Although even the positioning from Tim's is well aware of this. Smoke's going to pop. Got this ward on the high ground. So Moon's going to show mid. They still want to continue to wrap through with the rest of the team. See this sort of wrap. But it looks like TNC, they are so aware of this. Scanning it up. Didn't pop just yet, but uh, you can see the one standing on the front lines is Febby, a bit of a sacrificial lamb here. I mean, a jab show, but they know that Moon is mid, so if they actually want to try and hunt, Armel's looking for someone. Timing on the smoke, perfect as well. They're starting to make their move. There we go, sentry drop. Masteros is in trouble here. Still, Moon hasn't grouped up with the rest of Fnatic as well. Pops a stampede. It's going to try and retreat away to the northern tree line, but it looks like he's in trouble. Just that poison ticking him down. Centaur's if he wants to rejoin them, but it looks like the rest of Radiant, they're going to dip out, try and get the lane shoved in. They know that Roshan, well, at least uh, Febby scouted out that Roche is up, and they've, they've got the timer as well. Just look at the top side. Tim's is just cutting a path through the trees, and Gabby's following him all the way. <laughs> but uh, God Strength is still up for uh, not that much longer, actually. Only about 10 seconds, so taking Roche now is a little bit of a risk. Yeah, they. it does give them... 
Bit of an opportunity to maybe to find pickoffs to be seen moon hunting our metal, but you gotta be careful how deep you want to go for this. They had a, a very slight window there to potentially get a pick off, but rest of TNC recognizing this. They uh, group up once again and gonna continue to try and you know, see the lines drawn. Hold that triangle camp area. <laughs> They're just going straight back. They don't care. Uh, they know how important it is. Farm around the ancients to control the map as well. And now moon. See if they can pop the BKB here. Which is a uh, nine second duration for the Wind Ranger at the moment. What is uh, Raven? He's going for the Scotty, so he almost does have this completed. Let's we'll see if he's going to be able to have that one by the by the next fight, but you know, it might get to a stage when the God Strength is is back up. TNC could just force it. What's their vision looking like? They're oh, they're just going to clip. No, Moon's not going to walk into that. Uh... Dire tri camp vision just yet. So the observer war that just expired isn't going to give them that vision, but despite that, they're still going to go for the Roshan. Yeah, I mean, the, the lanes are in a very good spot. More importantly, mid, the, the lane to do a lot across the game at Dodo is completely shoved in, top shoved in as well. So, I mean, you're going to be able to try and trade and, and get an objective out of bot, but the, the big price is going to be that second Rosh. As Gabby will claim the ages, Armel has got the cheese, and now they're going to smoke up and try and link down to bot. Um, yep. Just keeping these lanes pushed in as much as they can, you know, Tim's is going to be the one showing, and that's fine. He's got plenty of escape potential for himself, and a DD. Come on, man. They got a bottle? No, they don't care. Okay. It's fine. He's just going hunting. Nope. Well, KP's hunting. Fine jabs, gets a double leap on top of the Yule Scepter. Tim's can follow up, however. Now that's no more leap charges. Cool, though, for Tim's. He might run into both of them, though. Stuns up one. Doesn't actually have the gem at the moment. He sees Moon is going to try and pop the BKB into the TPR. Moon will be fine. The rest of Fnatic. Oh, Mastros. Oh, Mastros uh, oh it's, it's good, though, that he interrupted the TP. Now you know that Sven has to be on this bottom side of the map. And wisely enough, Gabby's starting to beeline towards the middle of the map as much as he can. Does give them, yeah, a lot of information that he's even going to show on the outpost here. So we'll see if Radium, what they can do. They know they're split up. An opportunity for Moon to maybe go for a pick off. With the, the Zven not being able to group up, but you see Armel just kind of posturing, seeing if the, the Wind Ranger is thinking about making a play by the bounties. But the Arrow Fort, they find Tim's. He pops the Aeon disc here. Now it looks like still, he's even got that Yule Scepter as well. So nice pickup of the Aeon disc, just getting proc there. <laughs> I think that's a bit of a BM pause. <laughs> like, uh. oh, what, what's, what's that? You, you tried to <laughs> get me? No, not this time. Yeah, back into it. <laughs> oh, my oh, lag, see. yeah. I see, of course. Of course. It just... It, it couldn't be anything else, could it? It just had to be... Oh, my lagging. I mean, uh, how did Fnatic come back into this, you think? I mean, they're down 11,000 gold. The fights have felt very awkward for them. Just, you know, they're splitting up the map, but it feels like going head-to-head -head is just, just giving time for Raven? Or how do you think these fights are going to play out? It's going to be rough for them, right? It feels like... <laughs> Raven's a good player, but I just feel like I haven't felt his impact at all this game. And as soon as they realize, right, we've been picked off a couple of times by Moon, TNC have just been this ball, just a huge bundle together that never has the potential to get picked off. And even more, Wind Ranger is, it's all single target focused, right? And he's gone into a Chrysalis, so kind of doubling down on this style. I thought maybe he might opt to go into something like a Hex or something like that, so you can at least, you know, CC someone else while you're trying to burst down a, a secondary target. Oh, Moon could be in trouble. Gabby's able to find him, has to pop the BKB more defensively here, and now with the TPR under the cover of the Magic Munity. Bash, bash, Looks like Moon is fine, but now off to the western side as well. Armor's got to be careful. They've got the ward sentry combination they're going to try and blink for from Astros, but where's the fault? They get rid of the Lincolns. Armor protected thanks to the Omni Knight straight on top of the back line. Now with the BKB pop, he's going to try and look to turn with the tornado. And meanwhile, Gabby going to work on top of DJ, but it's just a position five at the moment. They want a better target. It looks like unfortunately Centaur, no retreat capabilities. He's going to be dead in this bottom side. He's down for 60. He's got a buyback available. But TNC, is that their opening to try and get something out of it now? They've got the God Strength for about half duration left over. You can just allow this vent to siege with two minutes left on the ages. They do. They either force the buyback out, they try and make an aggressive play. You've still got about five seconds on God Strength, so that tier three tower should go down. Backline, Tim's gonna get caught here, but the stun doesn't last for too long. 
Hang on, Dish is going to get blocked up once again. Now back inside they go. Buyback coming through finally from Centaur, but where's the follow-up stuns? Gabby, he just runs away. And now they can reset because they've got a ward kind of outside the base here, so they're going to be careful, Moon. Oh, push Moon up. might be dead. Oh. Oh, I mean, Gabby without that ultimate, maybe lacking some of the, the damage she's thinking he needs to bring down the, the wind ranger there. So they, they buy back on Masteros, they don't get anything out of it. Yeah, I was th thinking maybe they might try and go for a fake back because Rolling Thunder just came off cooldown, but you know, they're in a strong enough position that they can say, look, Orb of Destruction, that's a fine enough item. I want tier four items for Gabby. I want him to be an absolute B. See what else they're, they're able to pick up. I mean, what Thomas really at the moment they need a couple of a couple more stacks jungle camps to be able to find. But this has just been a very slow, you know, bleeding game where TNC just kind of continued to, to grow this net with lead very methodically. And you know, it's first game for them, first game for, for both of these teams throughout the group stages. So trying to just get a little bit of a footing here. This is knife, handy pickup. Pick that one up. I think it's going to be KP. What do they even get? Lucian's cape one dial. Nice little flicker as well. Not that it... Interesting. See if they want to hold that or not. But I mean, there's a Bissel Blade now picked up on Gabby. He's still got 15 seconds of the ages. And with Top shoved in, they're just going to move into the, the mid wave here. Melee racks down, full set of racks down. I mean, they Lincoln's Heavenly Grace, Alacrity, Zven. There is uh, a lot of buffs on this man. He's also got that level 25 as well. Radiant. Doesn't have the Aegis anymore, though. Just expired. This could be a decent time for Radiant, knowing that the Aegis expired. And he popped that God Strength. We'll see if they can find Tim's. He's already used a decent amount of his mobility, but once again, the Aeon Disc, they still find the stun, but Tim's is just so hard to catch. Or, or DC again mm -hmm. or port. Some... Mm -hmm. Get a Shaco, nice. Get a neutral item instead. They're actually still hunting though, Radiant. Maybe thinking someone's farming up the jungle instead of retreating all the way back to, to reset with the team here, which they have done so far. But have Radiant got a gem so far? Uh, they do not. I'm really intrigued to see when they want to pick up a gem because it's felt like Dire have had the map control for a majority of the game and, and also have won the, the warding battle as well. It feels like they're just having to play so much more reactively than TNC, right? Yep. Like all of their wards are just on defensive parts of the map. Whereas, you know, you look at TNC, they're aggressive. You know, they're, they're trying to make pickoffs happen. Oh, they're even going to be able to take away this uh, this camp from them, or sorry, this outpost. So, Moon. get that experience. Oh, sorry, they're going to split it. Oh, a double damage rune. Oh, Moon, he wants to steal it. He got it, oh. but it could cost him his life now, though, as maybe they were baiting it potentially as Moon. I mean, he doesn't have a buyback. Yeah. Just insta-tip from Gabby. And then, I mean, that is... Uh... He had the vision, so oh. there's no excuse there. Yeah. Well, that's... That's rough, to say the least, because now TNC are just going to walk it down. Wind Ranger, no buyback. We'll see how they're going to be able to hold this. I mean, no, uh, no repair kit shenanigans that we'll see, so TNC, they can just siege it down with mid, mid pushed in, Bod's getting shoved in as well, and just once again, look at the steroids that they give over to Gabby, and knowing that he's not buying back, they want to try and end it. It's so hard to kill anyone, you know, even Armel, he's picked up that Shaco, so he's sitting at 3.3k HP. They're going to try and move forward on Raven's Illusion. KP just controlling with the Atos, making it difficult for the Morphling to go on top of the back line, where we see Masteros going instantly with the double stun, but it's not going to matter because this has got the follow-up with the Rolling Thunder, and now that Heavenly Grace, along with the Guardian Angel, just nulling out any damage that the Morphling's able to dish out at the moment as Dai just rung a rampant inside the base. Four down, Dai back on the Mirana. This Morphling hasn't felt like there's been much impact this game at all. It's just Dire. They played the game incredibly methodically as Raven just goes back in on an illusion, unfortunately, so he's going to pay the prices. I mean, he's still got the man to try and play around with that attribute shift as well if he can get back inside the base, but when range is about to be up in five seconds, let's see if they can hold the on Fnatic. TNC, they want to try and reset Gabby. He's still got the cheese in the backpack. they got to be careful how far they push out here in Ballfling. He's, he's got that status resistance in the Heavenly Grace, but I mean, Armel can just go back forward. There we go. Hex to start. They no. got the follow-up. Now he's in trouble. Gets a four-stop for some positioning. Sven's going to 
fly through with the Superman, but on top of the back line, Wind Ranger getting controlled, so can't find the damage to be able to pick a hero off. Sven falling pretty low, pops a cheese, but now with the shotgun as well, Morphling will pay the price, but the real question is, is can you bring down Gabby? Nice two-man shackle, Raven, he needs to get in range to be able to do something. Actually, Lincoln's pops a replicate, so he's unable to utilize this through this engagement. Dyer, they're sticking around a little bit too long here. Let's see if they want to reset, considering Fnatic going to be up in a couple seconds here. They're back in, though. Tim's once again with the Rolling Thunder, just a constant chain lockdown, making it so awkward for them to be able to take these engagements. Raven pops the BKB. He's going to try and look to turn to deal with Gabby, but they don't have detection now. Once Armel instead, the BKB is about to expire. Gabby's back in. He's got the ultimate, the cleave as well. He's going to be able to bring down the Wind Ranger now with the Abyssal Blade forward as well. Morphling falling incredibly low. Raven has got the waveform back up. You've got to keep in mind the Thrones exposed as well, but what can they do to defend the bases? Master with the three man hoofs on. No detection. Once again, Gabby's able to turn. He's got the sustain coming through. Master's trying to utilize that flicker, but it looks like that's all she wrote as T and C. An incredible game one victory. Gabby gets an ultra to end it 43 minutes in. How fun of a hero is Sven, huh? <laughs> it just seems very fun and balanced, especially when you don't even need to worry about popping a BKB until they're all dead. You know, you've just got an Omni Knight to 